You know who it is, our man Ephraim Salam. Ephraim, what's up, brother? What's happening, brothers? How y'all doing? We are great, man. We are great. Let's get right to it. Lots to talk about. Um, the big news of the day, of course, Travis Kelsey with the injury to his knee hyperextended. We, we're thinking it's not too serious, but we don't know. The MRI hasn't come back yet. But what, I mean, I don't know if you ever dealt with a hyperextended knee. Tell us if you did, what it was like, or like how, how serious do you think this is for Kelsey and the Chiefs? Well, look, I, I, I've definitely dealt with, uh, uh, you know, hyperextension of the knee before. Um, it, it depends on the severity of the grade. Like, if it's it, it's going to be uncomfortable, okay? It's going to be uncomfortable. And now that the season is rolling around, it's going to be uncomfortable for for some time. Because if oh, wow. it isn't, okay. yeah, oh, it, it, yeah, it's going to bother you. Because what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to tape it up and uh, maybe brace it because you're going to have to stop it from uh, extending all the way. Now, can he push through that? Can he run a route? Can he be as explosive uh, as we've known him to be with a hyperextended knee? No, not to that level. But can you play? Can you get it done? Uh, Yes, you can, but it it won't be, you know, him in the middle of the field exploding through the middle and down the seam uh, like that because you won't be able to really open up open up your gape as you're running because whatever brace or tape job you're going to have on is going to keep it from extending all the way so you don't, you know, hyper extend it again. So do you so you don't do you expect him to play? I mean, they they're kind of uh, like fudging around it. First they said he uh, oh, he's going to be out. Now they're like, "Well, we don't know." I mean, Chris and I don't think you'd even chance putting him out there where some something bad could happen and you lose him, uh, I'd have to make sure that he's in better shape before I play him. Yeah, it seems that you, you know you're getting down to you know the start of the season, and what you don't want to do is have a major setback this early in the year. So if you were to caution, you you were to you know live on the side of caution and give him two weeks. Right, the first two weeks of the season, you'd be better served for the rest of the year. So we've got Kelsey out, we think, uh, with this injury. Chris Jones not there because he's holding out, you know, and at a, you know, at a standstill with the uh, Chiefs over his contract that he wants. Do you? I mean, it just feels like I, I get it. It's a long season. Obviously, there's plenty of time for them to turn it around. And Patrick Mahomes is there. But does this, if you were on that team, is there, would there be a feeling of, man, this isn't the way to start the season? This is, you know, something's, something's not right. The, the crazy thing, and you said it, you know, it, it would conventionally, yes, of course. It's like, okay, we, some things, we, our best defensive player, one of the tops in the league, is not under contract. There's a dispute there. Uh, one of our best weapons offensively may or may not be able to go. But the thing you said is, even though Patrick Mahomes is there. As long as that man is in the building, then there's no panic. There's not a lot of panic going on in that locker room, upstairs, in the booth, uh, in the stands. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is a difference maker by himself, as we've grown to see over the years. So as long as he's upright and healthy, you got a shot. Mm. Yeah, I still think that uh, you got to look at it, and this is what happens with good teams. People want to get paid, uh, you know, and this is why you can't hold teams together a long time. And I don't blame Chris Jones. If I'm the best defensive player. I want to get what I'm rightfully owed, you know. Like, he's won Super Bowls already. I don't. What am I holding out? I mean, saying I just want to yeah, play. Am I right? Reason, uh, yeah, he's a big reason they won the, yes. the Super Bowl. Right, so, right. With, without him – we might be having a different conversation. That's, that's what I'm saying. I and mean, why why should he be like, oh, I just want to be on a team. I don't care. I'll no, take the no, nah. no, 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 no. Get your money, player. Get your money. Everybody else Ephraim, is getting is, paid. <laughs> is it fair? I mean, because let, let's keep it real. Obviously, all these players are competitors, and they want to win. We know that. But let's keep it real. When you talk about legacy, it's great to have a Super Bowl as a position player. But where the the to, the main position it really affects is quarterback. Quarterback's the one that gets most of the credit. Oh, he's got this many rings. We don't really, you know, count rings with any other position. Does that 
do you feel like something like that should come into play for Chris Jones? I mean, he's already got two. So it's yeah, like yeah. he should be thinking, man, let me get as much money as I can during my career right? Like versus I got to get it. Like Tyreek Hill, is he hurting? If he never wins a ring, he was. he's still headed to the Hall of Fame and viewed as, you know, one of the all-time great receivers. Yeah, like Chris Jones is not thinking about another Super Bowl. That would be great icing on the cake in your career. But as a position player, like you said, we're not talking about the greatest defensive player to ever play. We're not talking about anything like that. I mean, Charles Haley got with five Super Bowl rings, something right. like that. And right. Aaron Donald's so, only got one, right? Even right. though he was maybe the greatest. And so, may never so, get another one with, with the way the Rams are going. So you're, you're, you're absolutely right when you're saying that, look, he's not like, I'm, I'm going to take less so I can be on this Super Bowl uh, winning team. Like we, we're going to go for No, he's like, look, man, pay me my worst. That's right. the bottom line. Pay me my worst. Uh, if it's worth it to you, then pay me. Yeah. That's e- it. That's e- the conversation. Ephraim, you played for the Lions. You had a cup of coffee and a sweet roll in Detroit. But you know the history of this franchise. Everybody's riding the Lions. The NFL put them on the season opener Thursday night against the Chiefs. Chiefs are without two of their three best players, and I'm just calling it. They don't win this game. These these are the SOL to me. These They're fraudulent. Here's a great <laughs> opportunity, Ephraim, to change the narrative about about who the Lions are. Go to Kansas City and win. Yeah, that, that's a tough task. And you, you, the Lions are an upstart team. Dan Campbell has them believing. The culture has changed there since when I played there and when we've watched what has transpired there. Uh you being a, a native Detroitian. Well, you know, uh, well, I'm not a native, but I've worked there for 20 years. I know people think well, I'm from Detroit, but I get you know well, what I'm saying, right? You got a Detroit look about you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. All, 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 my, all my friends from New York are mad at you right now. I've been born in New bad, York. My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, but, but look, you're, you're, Detroit ain't happy this is, this I know. Is, like, this, what? Is, this is it. Listen, man, listen. This is it. This is their moment to really pull the Colorado Buffaloes. Yes. Okay? Oh, this man. this is this is their moment to pull the Colorado Buffaloes and line up against one of the top teams, if not the best team in the AFC and 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 win on the road. We just saw yes. it play out. We just saw it play out and we just saw the energy that came after that. You people can't get enough of Colorado. It's, it's, it's on fire. Every they go into the national championship, <laughs> but that's the type of energy that Detroit can have and take over the uh, the NFL with going to Kansas City, beating the defending champions, and really setting your trajectory on being that team that we all think they're going to be this year. It's a very important game for them. I'm glad you brought up Colorado. I did want to ask you about that before you go. We got about a minute and a half maybe for your answer. Um, I mean, put yourself back when you were a college player. Well, look, we've seen there are great NFL players. This goes for NBA, baseball, all that too. That obviously the young players respect. But, you know, let's keep it real. A lot of times you're still not listening to them. But when it comes to a Deion Sanders, these guys are listening These guys are bought in. These guys are galvanized. What is it about him that, you know, just makes him able to connect with the younger generation of players? And how far do you think they can go? Like, how good is this team? It's swag, man. It's swag. Deion has always had swag. His model was look good, play good, they pay good. (laughs) Like, he came into the league like that. He had to curl with the gazelle glasses and the and the and the, the herringbone chain and the leather jacket. <laughs> Look, man, this is Deion Sanders. Deion's and and he's walked it, talked it, he's done everything you possibly can done. So when you're talking to a locker room of young men who revere you for what you've done and you're telling them the truth, then they line up and go, I t- I, I hit him on Instagram I'm like, yo man, Deion, you made his pregame speech he made me want to go back to college. We just, we almost the same age, and I was like, man, I'll come play for you. <laughs> right? But that's the type of energy that right. you need. Right? You can relate to the younger generation. Deion Sanders has taken over in, uh, social media, something that 
is near and dear to this this generation. He's winning the social media battle. They can relate to him on that level, so they relate to him on all other levels. He's the best cornerback, one of the best top five football players to ever play, top five athletes to ever play any sport. So, yeah, it resonates to these young men. Hell, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Now nah, I hear you well, on it, that. It man. definitely works when you win, and then and that's what he did. So he's got that going for him. There's no doubt about it. All right, that is our brother E from Salon. Great stuff as always, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Y'all stay safe.